The battle of the premium ultrabooks, Windows versus Mac, the age old fight that I'm sure will have no repercussions in the comments section down below. And I bet that we'll all get along with well thought out and articulated arguments of each. Or it'll be a raging nightmare. Welcome to YouTube. The M1 MacBook Air is easily my favorite laptop of 2020 and going into 21, I don't see anything else really upsetting it, which is probably why I won't shut up about it. However, it's not perfect and there are a few key weaknesses here that really rear their ugly head when you leave the walled garden that is the Apple ecosystem. Today we'll be comparing that to the Razer Blade Stealth 13 which by design is a gaming laptop but with its 11th gen Intel chip, dedicated graphics card and excellent port design and availability, this really fills in all of those gaps that I just said the MacBook Air fails on. However, the main question we'll be asking today is, are those gaps worth spending almost twice as much to get a machine that can play Witcher 3 at pretty decent settings? So is it? Let's find out. This one's controlling the computer, uh, this one. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Okay, we gotta be careful, cause this thing, trust me, we'll talk about this in a second, but this will smudge if we mess this up, is it okay? That looks pretty good. Oh, and don't mind this cable, this computer is running the camera. It's been a minute since we've had the good old Windows versus Apple debate here on the channel, and I would like to remind everybody that while I'm currently loving the Apple Silicon computers, I'll personally use whatever makes my life easier. So hypothetically speaking, if in 2021 Intel strikes back with some hitherto unknown alien technology that fixes some of their current issues, or if AMD starts to be fully implemented and accepted into more mainstream laptops, who knows? I could just as easily find myself back in the Windows camp. That was just there to say both are good. There's my argument for everybody down below. Both are good. So today when it comes to these two laptops, let's quickly cover the main specs and ordering options if you are considering one of these. The M1 MacBook Air at the base model will run you $999. For that price, you'll get that newest M1 processor, which has an eight core CPU, seven core integrated GPU, and a 16 core neural engine. You'll also get eight gigabytes of unified memory, which is a fancy way of saying RAM on this computer, and a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. On the other side, the base model of the Razer Blade 13 comes equipped with a quad core 11th generation Intel i7, that will be clocked at 2.8 gigahertz. You'll get 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. And in a very unique note for laptops of this size, the Razer Stealth 13 comes with a dedicated Nvidia graphics card, the GTX 1650 Ti. And all of that, this whole tiny package right here will run you $1,799. Oof. Oh. Still gets me in my heart wallet when I say it that a laptop this small can be that expensive. When it comes to laptop comparisons, there are five main categories that I like to consider. Power, thermal performance, battery life, usability, and portability. You, you know, the whole reason you get a laptop instead of a desktop, that portability one probably gonna be pretty important. First off, let's get to the power. These laptops have very different underlying architecture. The MacBook is working off an ARM-based structure and the Razer is working off of a more traditional x86 architecture, which, I mean, frankly, most computers, both Windows and Intel-based Macs, that's the kind of architecture that they work off of. And because of that, it's kind of hard to compare them one for one to power because they do approach power in different ways. Power is almost differently defined on both of these either way. And I'm not a very big fan of showing numbers and saying one is objectively better because numbers and benchmarks, yeah, sure, they're great, but they don't really show how this kind of tech works for a regular day of use. What I will say though is both machines are pretty darn powerful. When it comes to productivity, like the thing I do most of my life, both will be about as equal as you can get inside of their own respective ecosystems. Because frankly, you don't need all that much power to get worked out. I mean, look, for example, here's my case in point. Look at the Dell Inspiron line of laptops. Those are probably the default laptop in most offices. That is not a very strong computer, but it lets you check your outlook make PowerPoint slides, do all of that kind of work. So if you are looking for a machine to take to school or to the office, either of these would be fine. It just depends on your preferred style of operating system. Now, if you are asking for Gary's preference, I do like that on my MacBook, I can easily text through iMessage and it effortlessly syncs my notes and my calendar with my phone and my iPad. And yes, that's not unique to Apple anymore. You can do most of the same thing with something like the Google Suite or even that new system for Android phones to text through your Windows computer. 
But let's be real, it's not as seamless as the Mac OS workflow. Mac OS, if you are using Apple devices, just it's, mm. However, besides productivity, if you wanna do a little more specialized type of processes, I would actually say that these laptops do different things differently and they are better at specific applications than each other, so neither is actually better. And because it has a dedicated graphics card and runs the Windows operating system, if you want a laptop to game on, the Razer Blade has actually surprised me with how well it works. I mean, it is a gaming laptop. It says right on the sticker when you get it, it's a gaming laptop. And sure, you won't get the most out of the newest AAA games, but I don't play those either way, despite having a Windows PC desktop, like a big Windows custom PC in my house. I'm someone that's nearing 40. I find myself a little slower on the uptake of new games, but this has handled pretty much everything that's currently in my rotation. A little Witcher 3, some WoW, I play Terraria with my son, this doesn't, I did all of that on high settings and had a pretty good time with it from just this tiny little laptop. The MacBook Air for gaming is better than I thought it would be. And if your game supports the M1 processors, which is kind of rare right now, you can get actually usable gameplay with it, like on World of Warcraft. But I wouldn't buy the MacBook Air specifically to game. That's, I mean, that's something I've been saying about Macs basically since we've been talking about them like a whole year now. If you want gaming, Windows is gonna be better. But if we look at more creative enterprises such as photo and video editing, the roles will be reversed. Yes, the Razer Blade has a dedicated graphics card and video editing programs generally like those, but it's not a great generation of card to take advantage of the power that Windows is capable of. The GTX 1650 Ti, it's pretty meh as far as creative endeavors go due to it having an older style of encoder built in. I mean, you can use this to video edit and photo edit, but it will never be anything more than just okay. And I know, I know this is an ultrabook. I know this is super small, but a 1660 would have just been so much better. The 1650, if you're if you're a company out there making Windows laptops, please do not use the 1650 Ti. At least use the 1660. The MacBook Air, on the other hand, is a legit video editing monster. I'm still shocked at what this small laptop can do. And you might be thinking to yourself, Gary, yeah, sure. If you use Apple software, then you'll get a good experience. And it's not just Final Cut Pro that will be where the MacBook Air exceeds but if you were to use it, it would be incredible. Even the program that works on both Mac and Windows, if tuned for the M1 software, will work better on the MacBook Air. And the specific program that I'm talking about today is DaVinci Resolve, probably my favorite video editing suite. Yes, in a normal situation, DaVinci much prefers having a dedicated graphics card and will run far better on something like the MacBook Pro 16 or a dedicated Windows PC. Unfortunately, this video is not about those machines. Between these two, you'll have to lower the playback resolution on the Razer and on the Mac, it will have no problems editing all manner of raw files and it will render back in about real time, where the Razer will render back at about five to seven frames per second, which my basic math says that's about three times slower. Power's important and all, but let's get past that. Now let's talk about what happens to these computers when under load, because if a computer flubs its thermal management, you probably won't wanna actually use that computer or you're probably wasting money. And here it's, it's almost confusing. The MacBook Air does not have an active cooling system. No fan, just passive. While the Razer Blade does have a dual fan system built into the bottom of the laptop. You see that? Those are the two fans, they're in the bottom. And the vent comes out the back. But the good news is both of these computers are for the most part properly thermally managed. I haven't had a single problem with either of them using them in the ways that I would use each of these machines. And that's, that's kind of a weird qualification to make, but that just means that I don't game all that much with my MacBook Air, and I don't do all that much video editing, besides the test for this video, on the Razer Blade. If you use these for their intended purposes, they're really good. I like good news stories like these because it gets really tough the smaller the computer gets to make sure that the computer stays cool enough and not throttle the clock speed or active core count to make up for poor thermal engineering. And let me tell you, it's a big feat over here because those i7 processors are hot little systems. That doesn't tell the whole story though, but to get the rest of the story, we need to transition over into usability. How enjoyable are these computers to use? Because look, Team, look everybody, I very much prefer to enjoy my technology and not need to fight it or be annoyed by it. We just, I just have weird needs, I guess. I just have weird needs. Because it looks like some people that I see online, they want the best performance and then they're willing to accept a machine that's irritating to use. I'm not doing that. So while we did say that both computers are thermally managed well, they do go about that in separate ways. The MacBook Air does it by just not generating all that much heat with its processor. 
The Razer Blade does it by having the fans going a lot of the time. Your level of liking this laptop will be your threshold for that sound. That sound will either raise or lower your enjoyment of the Razer. Though I never did get the sense that the Razer fans were too loud, but honestly, after using the MacBook Air, everything is too loud. Even the main PC that I was just talking about a few seconds ago, it was sitting next to me while I was typing this script, and it's now too loud for me. Even though, objectively, if we were to put out like a noise meter, it wouldn't be all that loud. Other things for usability do go in Razer's favor, like it's got two Thunderbolt 4 ports and two USB-A ports, and those are on separate sides of the computer, which is just awesome. I love it. I love it so much. I really wish Apple would adopt this kind of a strategy in both having its USB-C on opposite sides, which are Thunderbolt 3, not Thunderbolt 4 like the Razer, but also expanding the type of ports on hand. A lot of accessories to this day, mice, keyboards, etc., those are still USB-A, and it's nice to be able to natively use a wired mouse and keyboard from the body of a laptop. Plus, if you do want dual use out of your computer, setting this into dock mode is doubly easier because you have two sides of the laptop to work with. In the MacBook's favor for usability, however, is the best keyboard on a laptop that I've ever seen thus far. The Razer's isn't bad, but it's not good either. The MacBook Air's keyboard is a masterpiece. It's got just crisp enough keys, perfectly spaced out for typing, wedge-shaped body that makes using this in any situation from here on a desk to a lap, to a table, to a stand, to anything. It's just darn comfortable to type on this laptop. And since that's what I use laptops for, it's very important for me that the typing is good. And it's, it's good. The next thing isn't something that I would normally talk about in a usability section. The razor blade, not just the 13, but all of them, these are smudge magnets. Like the only way to keep this chassis clean is to wear gloves or like I'm doing in this video, just never touch it. Just don't touch it. I think it's gonna smudge by my hands almost touching it. This will look gross in seconds of just picking it up and moving it somewhere else. And that's unfortunate because this is a gorgeous laptop, but you just like, you can't touch it. You, oh, I touched it. Please don't smudge. I don't wanna clean it again. If you are going to buy this, bring lots of microfiber cloths. Lastly, in usability, let's talk about the displays really quickly. The MacBook Air has a high resolution display with a 2560 by 1600 retina panel, and it's just gorgeous. Retina panels are, mm. The Razer though does have a lower resolution of 1080p. However, it does have a much higher refresh rate at up to 120 Hertz. Just like the usability in specific applications, when it comes to displays, neither is the clear winner. They are both actually really good panels. They're just better at different things. So let's move on to the most uneven and unfair section of today's video, battery life. These are laptops, so theoretically, you will probably be using them away from your house or away from your desk for long periods of time. Battery life, it's kind of important, right? And yes, longtime viewers will know what I'm about to say next. And if we are talking about Gary's set in stone rule that each device must meet an eight hour workday worth of battery life, yes, both computers meet that. The MacBook Air having around 18 hours and the Razer Blade having about 11. But did you catch that? The MacBook Air has almost doubled the battery life for half the money. That's kind of awkward. And when we say battery life, not all battery life is created equally. On the MacBook, all of the stuff that we've talked about previously in this video, all of that will stay the same when the computer is not plugged into the wall. On the Razer, as it is a Windows laptop, you will suffer a performance penalty doing the same. Yes, now we're talking about portability, but for the purpose of these two computers, portability and battery life, we're gonna merge those into kind of the same thing. And because of that, I do find the MacBook Air to be the more portable computer. Lasts forever, makes no noise. Not only is that good for you, it's good for everybody around you because nobody, nobody likes to hear laptop fan noise, especially people for whom that laptop is not theirs. Laptop noise irritates me. Somebody else's laptop noise irritates me way more. That makes, that makes sense, right? But at the end of the day, so what right? From a work, slash school, slash video, slash photo, slash, well, that's all that I have experience with. From all of those perspectives, is the razor blade worth twice as much? Only if you are really stuck on the size of your laptop and you really want to game as much as possible. Quad core i7 and 1650Ti for $1,799, that's very steep. That's not just steep in Windows land, that's steep in Mac land too. Those are just a steep price for those kind of components. You could do much better spec wise in both worlds. You could get a MacBook Pro 16 refurbished with a better processor, better graphics card for about that price. And if you really like Windows, the Razer Blade 15 
crushes the 13, and it's cheaper. It's just it's expensive. If you don't play games, it's not even close. The M1 MacBook Air is currently the best productivity laptop on the market. It's powerful, quiet, lasts forever. Gary keeps making videos about it. It's just, it's the best. And that's why this is the current yardstick that I compare everything to because I've yet to find anything else that beats it. And I mean anything else at any price point. Definitely nothing even comes close at its price point. So we got to find more expensive stuff to try to compare it to. Thanks to today's sponsor, Squarespace, you can create your own very beautiful website. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a professional website, online store, or portfolio. It's easy to claim a domain slash URL, create a custom site that matches your style, and bring your ideas to life. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash everydaydad to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you for watching.